Opinions expressed by the guests and contributors on Conklin and Company are not necessarily those of 13 ABC. Now, Conklin and Company continues with Take 3, commentary and analysis from our panel of political contributors. Welcome back, everyone. Eight good minutes with Ignacio Messina of the Toledo Blade. It is uh, the Blade briefing, but it is live and it is uh, in studio. Good to see you again. Thanks for having Post -primary me Post-primary election. It was a uh, very busy night, Tuesday night. It was. It was a late night. It was a busy night. And a fascinating night, I think. Sure. There was uh, a lot of back and forth. There was a lot of excitement at all the parties, as you know. Uh, extremely low turnout at 15.1% for a, a mayoral primate, uh, primary. Blame uh, it on the heat? Exactly. Uh, 94 <laughs> degrees that day. So not a lot of people came out. Uh, unfortunately. And we can talk about that. That's... A, that's Maybe a topic for another day because the, the, the turnout will be better, will be much better. Uh, we trust in early November. Let's take a look. When Jonathan, our uh, outstanding director, uh, popped up the, uh, the percentages uh, of votes that night, Ignacio in the race for mayor. And uh, Mike Bell wins, wasn't by a ton. Uh, he wins overall. Mike Collins, some say, sneaks in uh, to uh, grab that all important second spot. Anita Lopez had the uh, preponderance of, uh, labor support, although, uh, Collins had the, uh, the, the safety forces, but, and Joe McNamara, who spent a lot of, a lot of money, mm -hmm. um, came in fourth, not a distance fourth, a distant fourth, but a very close fourth. Sure. I think the conventional thinking was that it would be a Bell Lopez yeah. general yeah. election. And, you know, Mayor Bell predicted, and I kind of started to believe him towards the end that with, Joe McNamara and Anita Lopez splitting the Democratic yeah. vote that D. Michael Collins, the councilman found an avenue. from South Toledo, would find, find a way and make it into right. the uh, general election, which, you know, as you know, he did. Uh, and he will tell you that he's, he's been an upset guy before mm -hmm. um, who has uh, proved the pundits wrong. Sure. He plans uh, to knock on every door yeah. twice to you know, defeat Mike Bell if he can. Uh, and, and that's what we have set up now. The, uh, the uh, pool plays over. Mm -hmm. And it's on to the championship round uh, sure. in November. Questions now, uh, labor money already already starting to go to Mike Collins. Sure. D. Michael Collins. Sure. Uh, I spoke to him this morning. He said his phone has been ringing mm -hmm. nonstop since election night. I think you will see unions lining up to give him money because at this point, uh, the state Democratic Party, the local Democratic Party, I don't anticipate will endorse him but they do prefer him over the incumbent mayor for his support of SB5, mm -hmm. uh, for his um, stance on right to work in this mm -hmm. state. Right. So obviously I think Mike Collins will be the union's person in November. Yeah. Or a lack of stance on right to work. If, sure. you, if you look at the last couple of weeks, although it, it looks like no, he No, Mike, Mike Bell said under some circumstances, he, some could, circumstances. he could side with that particular right. law. Right. Where Michael Collins, uh, has I said we know he's, where he stands. Is he's right. completely against yeah. it. Yeah. All right. So uh, if you're Mike Bell and you're the winner of the primary, but 73% of the electorate did not vote for you, uh, is there cause for concern there that uh, you're, you're unable to bring in more votes on primary now? Well, like, like I said, it was a low turnout. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure there is some concern. I mean, Mike Bell is a very uh, skilled politician at this point. He's not going to take any, any opponent for granted. So uh, maybe concern is strong. I think he's cautious and you know, I don't think he's going to take Mr. Collins for granted as many people did during the primary. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, it sets up to be um, what will be a fascinating, you see uh, Mike Bell with his parents there, uh, Norman and Nora, and uh, it sets up to be an outstanding race as we go forward. Mm -hmm. Main issues in the campaign, will it be, will it be a labor against the, uh, the anti-labor guy? I mean, I, what do you see as, as being the, the the issues that really to point to? Really, I think jobs, safety, and neighborhoods are going to be the big issue in this in this campaign, much as they were in the primary. You know, when you had the 13 ABC Blade debate on this very stage, those were some of the main issues where, um, you know, Mayor Bell and Mike Collins really attracted a lot of voters to them, I think, and I think that Anita's performance, Anita Lopez's performance, probably detracted some of her voters. If a debate could have impact, I really, I do believe, uh, and, and that that debate had impact on, on who came out to the polls or who, who cast their ballots, how Abs they cast their absolutely. ballots. Absolutely, and I told you before we started taping, Joe McNamara on election day had more votes than Anita uh, Lopez. So she was ahead because of the absentee and the early voters, but I think the fact that he had more on election day showed that his campaign was really picking up momentum and that people were starting to listen to his message. All right, so that's the mayor's race. 
You cover city council on a weekly or daily basis uh, in, in addition to your investigative reporting. So let's take a look at those winners. Not a ton of surprises. I mean, if you're, if you're a, a familiar name, you garnered a lot of votes. Rob Ludeman gets the prize uh, for most votes. Jack Ford, former councilman, former mayor, former state representative. Uh, yeah, but here's second the, place. Here's the, have that. Here's, here's the, the big story. Sandy yes. Spang, a former Republican, now an independent, a, a small business owner. She owns a very popular, uh, I believe, coffee shop. Um, you know, a female, one of only two females on the slate. So she picked up quite a few votes to many people's surprise. And as you know, two incumbents, Adam Martinez and Sean Enright, did not make the top six. And traditionally... Mm -hmm. Top 12, but not top six. Sure. Right? So traditionally, yeah. those who make the top six in the primary advance and get elected. And there will be two new at-large councilpersons. Sure. George Sorrento exits, term limited. And uh, Joe McNamara says he's done mm -hmm. with... Uh, with service right now. He says that chapter Public in his service. life is now closed. Yeah, yeah. Um, here's the next, can we go back to that, Jonathan? Can we go back to that slate? Bill Delaney, uh, former tavern owner, uh, in the news from time to time, uh, over the smoking ban, James Nowak, John, John Celesta, mm -hmm. and Sean Nestor, uh, also in the running. Can, can, these, can this slate here, Ignacio, can these gentlemen, uh, make a dent here, get up to that top six. Well, that was, that's Joe Solis. Or Joe Solis, department. But probably not. Um, I mean, I don't see a lot of campaign money going behind these candidates. Um, I know Salusta is out campaigning really aggressively. If anyone on that chance has a slim chance, it would be his. A lot of signs. Sure. Yeah. But, um, you know, many pollsters and campaigners will tell you signs are not the most effective way to get your message out and get elected. Um, but he's got a chance, albeit a very slim one. Yeah. Theresa Gabriel. Sean Enright uh, running to be, uh, he was appointed, running to be elected. Uh, Sean Enright you have there. Adam Martinez, you mentioned, uh, you know, uh, an incumbent, but, but not up in that top four in slates of vote getters. Sure, so, I, I, I think Theresa Gabriel and Sandy Spang, the two females running, they're both former Republicans as independents, will be very, they're the candidates to beat at this point, along with uh, Sykes and Ford, I, yeah. I think their name recognition alone yes. has propelled them into the top Absolutely. six. Absolutely. And I should point out that Adam Martinez came in, I think, seven. Uh, he did very little campaigning, uh, didn't sign any literature, didn't do any press during the primary, but still he made it into, you know, the seven spots. So if he still has to leapfrog someone, though. Exactly, which is what he did last time, actually, mm -hmm. against Polly Taylor Gherkin. So Who's running for school board? Now running for school board. Sure. sure. It seems like everyone, if you don't win one, you run for another. You go for this office. Sure. Ignacio, thanks very much. Quick eight minutes. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time. And we'll see you next Sunday on Conklin & Company, everybody. Have a great day. See you later.